Bear with me two seconds. All right. All right, we're ready to go. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Whole Nader here again. Um, uh, I told you guys we'd be following up with a uh, another cooking special today for Super Bowl Sunday. So welcome again. Um, <coughs> So, this is what I did, this is what I got for you guys. So, right here, I'm gonna be making my uh, my really, really tasty, famous smoked salsa. Everybody loves it. Uh, a lot of my football coach buddies uh, love to dig into it. What we got here is we got wings that we just got done about 10, 15 minutes ago, getting them in a nice marinade. Um, they're gonna go into the fridge now, where they'll, they'll be there for about another 45 minutes quick marinade and then we'll when we're done with the marinade what we'll do is we'll actually take them out uh, take them out of the marinade dry them off we'll uh, strain the marinade into a saucepan and we'll then use that uh, marinade we'll cook it down um, I'll add some stuff to it here and there um, to tweak it to make sure you get the flavor right and then we'll use it as a wing sauce later too um, so this is what I put in the marinade uh, I put the spicy chili crisp I actually got this in a bespoke post box. Um, I'm not sure where you find it. I'm sure Amazon, just like everything else, it's pretty good. Uh, we got organic apple cider. Um, we got some rice vinegar, just very little of that, not too much. Um, a little dab of stir fry oil. Uh, the stir fry oil, it's pretty good. They use onion, garlic, and ginger in it. So it gives the oil a, a much greater flavor um, and imparts it pretty good to the chicken wings. Salt, pepper, onion powder, some ground ginger, a little bit of garlic power. Um, I minced up some garlic, and then we put in some sriracha, some brown sugar, and then this orange juice right here. So this orange juice, the reason I use this orange juice is because normally I would use orange juice and then mix it with water. This is a 50% uh, orange juice. It's already kind of watered down. Um, less sugar, it's better for you. So I, I use that, and then I fill the rest of the bags with that, and that's what they're marinating in. So. Um, while I had those marinating, I went out and I set up the big green egg. Um, so, got it pretty much good to go. Step out. That's a me bug. Got my little mini me filming for me today. Got a mini holidayer. So, uh, you can come in here and take a look. Uh, so, I use an electric fire starter just because I can kind of like set it and forget it. So, while I'm still doing meat seasoning and prep work, um, I'll put this in here and get it going. As you can see, we've got a nice uh, fire going with the coals. Um, I... All right, so this is the big green egg. Whenever you go to uh, start, it's a uh, what's called a Komodo grill, um, which is a type of ceramic grill that was brought over, I think, from... Uh, the story goes, or at least the one I remember reading, is that the owner of the Big Green Egg Company saw them over in Japan and really liked them. Either way, it's a double-barreled ceramic grill. They're awesome. They can hold temperature for, like, if you fill this up, like, with a full uh, load of charcoal, which we're not doing right now because that'll get it too hot for what we're doing. Um, by the way, for the temperatures, I like to keep it around 350 uh, to 400 for wings and for, I'm going to be making the Mrs. Uh, salmon. Um, so I'll be smoking that as well. Uh, I've got, I use mesquite wood um, just because my little mini holinator here, who's my film helper today, um, she's actually got quite a few allergies, surprisingly, to a lot of different types of woods and stuff. <coughs> and so, all right, um, so we've got the fire going. Uh, I'm going to stoke it a bit, um, kind of spread out the coals. As you can see, down here is your vent um, for air control for the uh, Komodo grill for the Green Egg. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. It allows a lot of airflow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try and get the rest of the charcoal lit um, to get a full, even char uh, charcoal bed going. So soak it a bit, leave the vent open for the full right now. May even add a little bit of charcoal. Uh, that was the rest of that bag that I had. I've got another bag here that will be opening up. Um, already you can see uh, I got my drill down there. So one of the things I do is to, uh, to keep the grill clean. I'll take the drill and I've got a, uh, a brass brush that I put on the end and I clean it. So grill's clean, ready to go. All right, come make sure you get a, a good click on this bag. I'm about to show you guys a tip for opening these. These bags, almost everybody, almost everybody hates. Um, come over here so you can see. All right, so you see these 
these are the bags that a lot of people always rip and mess up. And so I'm going to show you guys a trick. I kind of already uh, started this one, uh, but I'm going to show you how it works and so how you can open these in a very easy pull every single time. All right, so if you guys look at the stitching here, the stitching on these bags, there's a one stitch on one side and there's a double stitch on the other. The double stitch side needs to be on your left. And when you do, uh, if there's a knot in the end, you can just pull the knot apart to where you have two separate strings. And then once you do, you literally just pull and look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. And it comes right off. So you don't have to tear bags, get frustrated. It's a lot easier. I don't remember where I watched that. It was on, uh, I, I watched a lot of barbecue shows and stuff on YouTube. And so it was on one of those. Um, that's where it's at. Um, but we got the fire going. Like I said, I'm going to add a little bit more charcoal. Not too much. So BP is what I use because it's pretty cheap at uh, Kroger across the road. Yeah. Normally, if, uh, if I had more money to drop or if I wasn't so cheap about it, I would get Fogo charcoal. It's a natural lump charcoal. It's, the reason I get it is it's really, really big chunks. The BB stuff is like a lot of little chunks. Little chunks are okay for what we're burning down and doing today, but for the most part, you want bigger chunks if you're going to be smoking stuff uh, like briskets or pork shoulders uh, because you want it to burn more slowly. Or, sorry, you want it to burn slower and you want it to burn longer. Um, you don't want it to burn hot and fast. Like the, the smaller pieces tend to burn hot and fast. As you can see, we've got hot red charcoal. Uh, we got the little bit that I just poured in. We're going to let, we're going to soak it, get it mixed up, get that airflow going, and so we can get all this lit. So again, we'll have a nice even charcoal bed. And then once the charcoal bed gets going, I'll actually toss on some, uh, not charcoal, but some mesquite chunks. So we have mesquite wood here, Western brand. Again, uh, it's what I've got at the Kroger, so it's what I use mostly, uh, just because the Kroger's right around the corner from us. I've already got a bag open here. So mesquite wood, it's a very, very strong wood smell. Um, and when you smoke it, it, it does impart a really, really strong flavor. Um, someone, someone once said that it was uh, it was too strong to use to smoke a lot of stuff, but I, I disagree. It's like my favorite, even though she's allergic, to, my pecan is one of my favorites. And but because she's allergic to pecan wood, uh, I use the mesquite, and I, I really like it a lot. Um, so we got that going. We've got the uh, the fire is going pretty good. Uh, there's a uh, or pretty well. We've got most of the charcoal lit. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, the grate here. And one of the tricks, even though I've already used the uh, the wire brush wheel on it with the drill to save my to save my arm, I'll go ahead and put the grate right over the fire. Um, and then I'll get some aluminum foil in a bit, and I'll use aluminum foil to wipe off. Because um, you don't want to use, even though I use the wire brush, I, I want to make sure I wipe it all. Uh, be careful using wire brushes. The uh, needles have been known to, uh, the wires fall off and fall on the grill and they get on people's food. And some people supposedly have seen stories online that they get them lodged in their throat. So um, always pay attention when you clean the grill with the wire brush. And then, like I said, I use aluminum foil to wipe it down after it gets a good burn. So we'll go ahead and close this up. We're gonna let that come up to temp, um, and while we let that come up to temp, it's gonna burn off a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a lot of the like uh, any remaining food particles that weren't got with the uh, the wire brush cleaning off. So um, we'll go ahead, uh, we'll step back inside here for two seconds, um, and then uh, we'll do a Q and A session. I'll sit down outside. I've got my diet Dr Pepper out there, and while we wait for the fire to get going, um, so that we can put on. The first thing that we'll put on is we'll put on the tomatoes and the jalapenos. Some people smoke the uh, the onions whenever you do smoke salsa as well. I like onions fresh and crisp. Um, so the only heat that I want them taking on is when they kind of, as Kevin puts it in the office, you know, they get to know each other in the pot. So whenever I uh, whenever I bl uh, blend the uh, the salsa stuff after it comes off of the fire, so the tomatoes and jalapenos, I will then toss. Um, I will put garlic in there too. That's one other thing. I put garlic and then I decide that day if I want garlic in the salsa or not. It's hit or miss if I do, but when I blend the, the cooked jalapenos with the tomatoes, it's still really piping hot. So when I throw the onions in, the onions do cook a very, very little, but they will cook a little bit, but they cook 
their um, their flavor into the salsa, and I think that's one of the things that makes my salsa pretty good. And then um, the 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 garlic will do the same thing when we toss in the few times that I do, and then you dice up a lot of cilantro, put it in, and then you put lime and then salt and pepper to taste. But we'll we'll see that process in a little bit. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get get these out here. I'm just gonna set these over here um, just so they can get ready. Make it easier to grab so I already have it outside. I use the Blackstone. That's one of the things I was going to talk about here in a bit, um, is what I'm trying to do. So I, we have this little 10 foot by 10 foot back patio right now. I use that, but it's such a tiny space. I really don't have much room to work with anything. So it's, uh, it's pretty cramped. So my goal is this, uh, whenever I finally get to feeling 100% better, I was going to dig out uh, the back area and I'll point, I'll point in the corner. No, but just wait, they can't see it. It's just, out, it's outside. I'll show you. Uh, but the back corner and the reason for it is like right now, um, because I'm using the big green egg, which is direct, I'm going to be using it direct heat. I want the temperature to be kind of like pumped up high. So there's this crazy crosswind that comes across. Um, so it really gets that big green egg. I think I've got that big green egg up to like 750, 800. So it can get really, really hot, um, which is good for searing steaks and things like that. Um, but today we're going to keep it a little bit lower. But anyway, that wind is so bad. I've got to I've got to make a barbecue, outdoor barbecue area in that corner because that corner of the backyard is the only corner I can actually get my offset going because the wind is so bad. If I put the offset one way, it goes up to like six, seven hundred because the wind, even with it just cracked, because the wind comes through at that high of a speed across our backyard. Um, and so if I turn it the other way, it comes down the smokestack, and then I can't get the cooking chamber to get hotter than like 125. So um, that's why I always wheel it out in that corner. I'm going to be digging up and creating a backdoor um, kitchen. So watch for one of the future videos of me actually doing that. So that'll be fun. Um, I think my drink's already outside, so we'll go ahead and we'll take a seat out there. I've got a laptop set up, and uh, you guys can ask some questions about cooking and stuff if you have any. Other than that, I'm just going to be talking and chilling out back, so let's go. Gravity chair here. Pull on my laptop. Let's see what you guys are. Uh, see if anybody's in the chat. See what they're saying. Hi, soccer bomb T. How's it going? Hi, you Brandy. Yeah, so this is my backyard. Uh, it's pretty big. It's awesome. I like it. Uh, the only complaint I have is, like I said, this uh, back patio area we're at right now is only 10 feet by 10 feet. So my offset smoker here, the Old Country Pecos, um, it's so large, it can barely, it takes up over half the, the space right now on this side. Um, and then if you put two chairs, like I've got my gravity chair uh, right now, and then my daughter's sitting in the, the chair filming for me right now, um, she... Uh, I mean, we take up almost the entire back patio. So, who am I rooting for in the Super Bowl? Oh, I've got to root for Pat Mahomes. You got to root for the Texas boy. You know. Uh, plus, like I said uh, on one of my streams earlier, he seems like a pretty cool, cool guy. Um, so, yeah, I, I I like him a lot. Tom Brady, you know. Yeah, okay, what he does on the football field is pretty amazing, especially for how long he's done. He's pretty old. Um, but the cheating. Uh, it's always going to stick with him in my mind. Like, even if he's still good and he didn't have to cheat and there's other people that cheat, I just, it's hard for me to respect cheaters because not only did he cheat there, uh, I know it's, uh, it's kind of judgy of me, but uh, he was with a um, another girl, um, Bridget Moynihan, um, and he, like, left her while pregnant for his current wife, Giselle Bunch. And that's nothing against Giselle or anything like that, but uh, I just... That always just rubbed me the wrong way, so I can't I can't really ever root for Tom Brady. It always bugs me. Um, so, hang on, I'm pumping the channel. Give me one second.
Yeah, so uh, for those that are just joining us, we're uh, we're just kind of waiting for uh, kind of waiting for the uh, the big green egg to finish coming up to temp. Um, we're letting it cook off some of the uh, uh, we're cooking off the grill right now, um, the, the cooking rate, so that we can actually uh, go ahead and uh, get the uh, get the, the vegetables on. So the vegetables I leave on for about an hour. Um, and then and I'll rotate them maybe two times uh, during that cook. Depends on uh, what the temperature is. Like I said, I, I usually keep it about 300, 350 for, for smoking vegetables. Um, but yeah. All right. Back to the chat. Yeah, go Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing too is I, I like Andy Reid a lot. Um, I really hated when he was in the Cowboys division because he always coached the players ridiculously well. I mean, look at what he did with Donovan McNabb in his career, and then just not Donovan, or not just Donovan McNabb, look at Nick Foles. Nick Foles was amazing, and uh, Doug Peterson, the Eagles head coach, former Eagles head coach, because, you know, let's fire a Super Bowl winner because he won't do as we say. Um, anyway, that's a messed up situation. feel sorry for him. Uh, but anyway, uh, Doug Peterson actually... Um, I was reading an article on ESPN one time that said that Doug Peterson, that, you know, if you people don't remember Nick Foles' first couple of starts, he didn't look that great in the Eagles' Super Bowl run because um, it was at the end of the season when Wentz got hurt. And so he, uh, he went ahead and um, he said in the interview that they went back and watched what Andy Reid did with Andy Reid's offense when he had Nick Foles because I think – one year, Nick Foles went like 30 or 31 and 1 for interceptions. I have to look up the stats to be sure, but yeah, so um, he went back and looked at what Andy Reid did. So, like, what Andy Reid does is, is just amazing for as far as like he's an old school ball coach, but the guys love him and he adapts to the game. So, like, he's all about using analytics and studying the college game and kind of how they're using. Uh, you know, spread them out and use space. Get your fast guys the ball in the open area and let them make a, a you know make, make a move and run fast. Uh, like he he bought into it, so I'm I'm all for that. Alrighty. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna set the. Uh, stream down for a second. I'm going to uh, the stream's going to keep going, but I'm setting my computer down. Uh, I'm going to check on the uh, the coals here, see if we have that nice coal bed we're looking for. And then I'll take the grill off, or the grate off if we do. I'll throw in some uh, mesquite wood chips and we'll go ahead and start to get the uh, the vegetables on for the salsa. Yeah, so you can see um, grate's clean. Go ahead, looked at it. I don't see any, and I'm taking this across just to make sure I don't see any of the wire brush uh, pieces. So I'll go ahead and use this is the <laughs> this is the all-in-one tool that I use for my big green egg. Back up, bug. I'm gonna be coming that way. So uh, it's technically it's for removing the, uh, the ash, um, but I use it for picking up the grain all the time. And then I'll set it on here. That way. As I, you can see, most of these pieces are pretty small. So they'll burn really fast, um, but we'll get a nice hot white coal bed. Um, some of those pieces from that end of the last bag were pretty small, so they burned a bit faster than I thought they would. So I'm just gonna add one little few, few pieces. Those will burn, those will catch real quick. And then I'm gonna add some some of the bigger chunks on the edges here, and you'll start to see we'll get that smoke, that nice smoke going, and we'll start with the vegetables. I like to add about five uh, five big chunks. If I have smaller chunks, so like I'm at the bottom of the bag, then I'll add five. Uh, I'll add probably closer to like ten total pieces because um, they're about you know half the size or smaller. I really like that mesquite smell, that mesquite smoke. Um, mm. So you see it's going to start smoking. You immediately smell that bug. Like you immediately, yes. like that mesquite's pretty strong. So I like mesquite. I know I've already said that, but it's good stuff. Uh, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get the grate back on there. Um, we'll let it, okay, so one thing about uh, cooking with charcoal and cooking with wood, you want it to burn off a little bit. And so to 
burn off a little bit. I'm gonna leave this open. We're getting ready to get it at the temp. I've been messing with this thing long enough. I know that you leave about an inch. If you leave it about an inch open, it should keep you about 350, 400. Again, you'll, each green egg is probably a little different depending on how your, your, um, your ceramic pot sits on the inside and how the grates are sitting but um, in the airflow. But I usually, one inch usually is about three to 400. And so we'll let, and as you can see, that mesquite starting to catch, you start to see that smoke. You want it to burn off a little bit and you want that smoke to become clear. Uh, that, that smoke that's kind of thicker here that you see, that's a uh, most, it's got like creosote and other stuff in it. Um, kind of like, it's like almost more of like a, a really, really strong, oily, almost like just smoky, like, uh, like oil. Yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but it's creosote. It's really bad. It's what happens when you burn wood. Um, but it, it just, it's too strong of a bitter of a flavor. We don't want that. The clean smoke imparts the smell of the wood and the flavor. So got that smoking. Uh, we'll take a seat again. Uh, we'll wait a couple of minutes, let it burn, get a bit clear smoke. And then we'll, uh, <coughs> we'll continue on. We'll put the, uh, vegetables on. We'll get that salsa going. So hop over on the computer again, see if anybody's got any questions. When you make wins, do you, wins do you prefer dry seasoning or sauce? Okay. So. It, it depends like uh, like I marinate uh, so like I've got them sitting in the marinade right now um, but what I like to do is I'll pat them dry after I get them out so I'll have paper towels and pat them dry and then I'll put a little bit of oil on them and then salt and pepper and then I let I cook them um, I don't like to use the sauce during the cook unless it's like really like at the very very end because I feel like you uh, you mess up on the wings, you mess up the crispiness of the actual skin, and getting that skin nice and crispy, uh, if you cook it at about 400, 450 at the end, just for a little bit, that crispy skin really makes a wing taste good. I will, I will put sauce on the side, and I'd like to dip it. Um, I like to... Uh, so, uh, sorry, I think I lost signal there. We're on the back porch, so it's like pretty far away from the router, but um, afterwards, I'll dip it in a sauce. Oh, so for the marinade, I guess you, if you didn't see it at the beginning of the video, you, you can go catch it. But um, in the marinade, I've got some red chili uh, flakes um, that are these special little red chili flakes I got in like this bespoke post cooking edition. Um, and it was all Asian themed. So I'll show you that in a second when we go inside. Actually, we got some time while it cooks. So I'll go show you guys the marinade again uh, for those that joined us. All right, but we'll head in. Right, show the smoke so you can see that mesquite starting to catch um, and it's really thick dirty smoke so um, that thick smoke is either wood that's just now starting to burn or it's a sign of your fires choking i know that i've used this plenty that one inch is plant uh, is more than enough plus with the wind uh that fire is not choking it's uh, it's just burning that wood initially so All right, so real quick for an update, or like to go over one more time what I do for a, uh, a marinade. Uh, this is what I was talking about. So they're called spicy chili crisp, and it's like this oil-based, and it's got soybeans in, and these uh, Thai red chilies, um, apple cider vinegar, a uh, little bit of rice vinegar just for uh, flavor, a little bit of stir-fry oil. Um, again, stir-fry oil has onions and garlic and ginger in it. Uh, so it gives it a really good flavor. Salt, pepper, ground ginger, garlic powder, little bit of garlic powder because we use a lot of fresh garlic powder. Um, onion powder, uh, we use fresh garlic, sorry, not gar uh, fresh garlic powder. So we use fresh garlic and then brown sugar and sriracha. Uh, you then take that and you pour this orange juice in it because the orange juice is 50% sugar. We were looking it up. All that means is that they added more water to it. So it's a diluted down um, orange juice. It's not as like harsh, uh, which you want to put some water in your, or I tend to put waters in my brines and marinades. Um, but I, I like, I like that orange juice. And so we've got it all sitting in here. And then when I take the wings out, when I pat the wings dry, I'll actually, I'll keep this sauce and I'll actually, um, or marinade, I'll put the marinade in a saucepan um, and then I'll add some more water and uh, some more orange juice to taste and more seasonings and I just taste it periodically and I make it into a sauce that I then coat the wings with, so. Yeah, so that's what I do for a marinade. Um, mm. Yeah, it's pretty good, I like it. 
Um, and like I said, a big thing is when I take it out of the marinade, whenever it's time to cook, um, we'll go ahead and um, when I take it out of the marinade, we'll pat it dry, like I said, um, to get the crispiness and that really like the good texture on the outside of meats. You really want the meats to be as dry as possible with a little bit of oil, and it's that oil and high temp that will kind of like basically uh, the oil will you know fry it like fry that skin surface and give you that nice crispy skin that you like in a wing and then like i said we'll put sauces on the side but again i find the sauces destroy the skin kind of like uh if you try to put uh, anything on brisket you can destroy the bark all right so most of that wood is starting to burn down um coals are good so much wind it'll start burning it uh, and it'll raise the temp if you leave it open too high or for too long so we'll go ahead and uh, we'll add the vegetables now so this is for the salsa like I said uh, this is the jalapenos and tomatoes get Roma tomatoes I try to find them I don't like them when they're this big but that's what they had this um, they had most of the ones that were the size I like but Coal bed pretty uh, or lit pretty evenly will be good. Um, like there won't be too bad of hot spots. The green egg's pretty good about keeping even temperature across as long as all that uh, charcoal isn't lit. If you have any charcoal that's not lit um, or isn't burned down, then it's gonna have like low spots. All right, and then the last thing, these are some uh, habaneros. I actually am gonna use those because we're gonna make some mango habanero uh, sauce from scratch. So it should be good. I'm gonna smoke them, get that going, close this off. All right, this should be good for the salsa. So again, I'll stay out here. This is what I normally do. I like just hanging out out back, sipping on Diet Dr. Pepper. That's my, my, my drink. If you guys ever have me in class or have before, I constantly pound Diet Dr. Peppers. I'm a, Addicted to them. I like them. Um, would be regular Dr. Pepper, but gotta gotta watch that weight. Sugars, sh drinking that much sugar's not good. I mean, drinking this many is not good either. But you know, at least it keeps my weight kind of down. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead. Um, I'll sit down. I'll see if uh, anybody's hopped in the chat, has any questions or anything, and then we'll get going. sugar in the orange juice yeah that's why I, I try to uh, try to dab as much uh, and, and pat it dry as much as possible I will rinse it a little bit that way the flavor is kind of penetrated in I haven't had to like I don't put so that's why I said I use that orange juice because that orange juice is 50 50 uh, or it says 50% less sugar so it's uh, again it's basically like normal uh, from concentrate orange juice and then we go ahead and we put or they they instead they put like half the normal concentrate and like the normal amount of water or a little bit more water um, and so it dilutes it so it's really not too sugary it's it's not too bad don't eat meat it's wrong I'm sorry you feel that way I I, I disagree um, but uh, I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life uh, you can you if you choose not to eat meat or if whether it's part of your personal views religious views i won't judge you for it i do cook quite a few vegetables and stuff as well um and i'll smoke a lot of them as well jackfruit things like that i i do cook vegetables but i don't know there's something uh something that i i, I like about it i i well i'm i, I don't I, I don't know what to tell you like i i know it's a sensitive subject so um yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel bad about it, but I just don't want to think about it, uh, because I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty tasty, so, um, they shouldn't have been so delicious, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not gonna take it back to the store, I've already opened it, it's a no return policy, they're marinating in the fridge, so, um, if you want to, to, if you want to take that up as your cause, then I, I support you. Um, so, 
I'll just say that. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to do it vindictively, but, I mean, I'm sorry. Like, if you've ever had brisket, it's really, really good. And same with, you know, pulled pork and all those other meats. So, I'm, again, to each, to each their own. I'm sorry. Would I consider going vegan? I've actually thought about it, um, just to try it and just to see what type of effect it has on my body and, like, my overall health. And, um, especially since, you know, um, with how much issues I've had with, uh, my, my injury from the military, and then one of my favorite people in the world, Kevin Smith, um, who, he directed some really crass movies, but I, I really like him, he's a funny guy, and he's really, really down to earth, uh, if you guys don't watch him, y'all should, uh, his streams and podcasts, they're, again, really crass, but really funny, um, he had a massive heart attack, and after he had his massive heart attack, his daughter was vegan and talked him into going vegan, and ever since then, man, he dropped, he went from Silent Bob, who in the movies was nicknamed Tons of Fun, to now he's extremely skinny, he's really fit, he, he walks around, like, pretty healthily, and so, I, I, it, I've considered it before, I, I would be interesting, it may, maybe I'll do that on the channel at one point, like, maybe go 30 days vegan, like, over the summer. Or, ooh, it's barbecue season. Okay, I'll try it. I'll try I'll think about it. I'll think about it. How does that sound? Okay, all right. I'll think about it, and maybe I'll do it, uh, I'll do it for like a month and see, uh, see how, how it goes. Thanks for watching, chatting. Even one month would save a few chickens' lives. Okay, if it's, if it's for the saving of lives, I can do it for that, and for, you know, on the science side of me, uh, being a science teacher, I would like to see the, uh, the overall, like, effect on my body's, like, well-being, so I'd have to go to my doctors and kind of, like, get, I would want to, I would want to really detailed, like, look at, like, all the different uh, levels, cholesterol, sodium, all that, and monitor my blood and my body, and just see how much it, it affects us, and see, uh, like, kind of, if, if it would be something that I would consider doing long term and then just cooking meat and stuff for the for the other people but I'm, I'm not sure yeah I will say that I do have to agree with that you know when I was younger like really really young I was too young to remember um, we had well we actually had chickens twice so uh, but the chickens we had growing up um, so we had two acres of land that we lived on and at one point my dad had a chicken coop and chickens and I remember I've heard stories that there was this one rooster who was just like the biggest jerk, like would chase people all over the yard, would peck them, like just be this massive a-hole to everyone. So, uh, and I remember hearing the stories about that chicken. The ones we got um, later when we were a bit older, uh, probably closer to 10, I have to ask my mom, uh, I don't remember exactly when we got them. Those, I don't remember being as jerky, but they, they didn't do much. We had to feed them a lot, and they just kind of walked around. I think my dad liked having them around and was planning on, I don't know if he was planning on raising them to, to eat or we were going to try and uh, have them lay eggs, but, uh, but that's, 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 what we, uh, that's what we did. Oh, no. You might have to see if the audio is still coming through. The, uh, the headset just died on me. Bear with me one second while I make sure it's still coming through the stream. Okay, good. Yeah, it's still coming through. Roosters have a harder life. They get minced up alive. I mean, yeesh, yeah. yeah, like I said, it's like that book, The Jungle. Like, when people started reading everything that was happening, they weren't very happy about what was going on in the meatpacking industry. I don't condone if they're slaughtered, uh, like, like, really brutally. I mean, if there was a way, if they had, like, a system to where it could be, like, you know, I don't know, maybe take them out to a drink, give them a last meal, or give them some options and stuff, and, you know, kind of showed them a good life for a little bit, <laughs> would, would that be better, um, and it, more honorable of a, of a sacrifice? <coughs> Yeah, that's what I was curious about. Are you just against it because of how violently they're killed? Or are you against it because, uh, just in period, like you don't like the, the sacrifice or, uh, animals or humans eating other animals? It would be different altogether. Okay. Okay, I can, I can understand being against the violence in it. I can understand that because I've seen some videos of how they kill some of the livestock and the conditions they're living in, and it, it is pretty gross and disturbing. So I can, I can get behind that. 
Um, like I said, if you want something funny, there's this old show called Dharma and Greg, and it's really funny. So her mom, uh, Dharma's mom in there, like, there's this Thanksgiving episode where they have to go to, like, all, like, five different Thanksgivings because they overcommitted. Um, still awake? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've seen that. Like, I've seen videos of that. That's messed up stuff. Um, but... Yeah, it's pretty messed up. But on the Dharma and Greg episode, they have all these uh, Thanksgivings they're going to. And her mom's kind of a hippie, and she won't, uh, she doesn't eat meat. But to try and give them a Thanksgiving because she doesn't want to be, like, be, like feel bad because they're sacrificing their Thanksgiving uh, and not getting turkey, she decides to cook turkey. But she feels bad. She she gets a live one because she doesn't want it to be slaughtered, like, inhumanely. And But she can't bring herself to, like, kill it. And so she ends up, like, drinking a bunch of wine, and she gets the turkey drunk but, uh, and basically tries to be nice. And, and then, like, they come over, and she's just crying and crying because she basically she got the turkey drunk because she felt bad and then tried to slaughter it that way. It's a really funny episode. You should watch it. You should look it up. That scene's pretty hilarious. And welcome to the stream. Uh, for those that are joining us, we're working on, we've got the wings marinating in the house right now. Um, we got the, uh, it, it's about, let's see, we're rolling about 350, 375. Um, we've got mesquite um, charcoal and mesquite uh, wood, uh, wood chunks. And we've got the, the vegetables smoking. At this point, it's been on for about 10, 15 uh, minutes. We're gonna go ahead and rotate. See, they're picking up pretty good smoke. Um, all of them are getting a nice little char to them. Uh, the, the habaneros are really small, so they don't take long to smoke. I try to put them off to the side so they're not really directly over any flames. Um, again, I really like that char flavor um, on the vegetables, especially, um, you know, that's, if you leave jalapenos, you know, chipotle peppers are just jalapenos that have been out for a while. Um, they go red, and then they, um, they smoke them or they roast them, um, and they char them, and that's what gives them that unique flavor. So I like getting a good char on most of the stuff. Again, you want that clean smoke, as you can see. There's not really smoke pouring out. It's not black. Um, it's it's mostly like, like a clean white smoke. You can hardly see it. It's really thin. That's that good clean smoke that you want whenever you're cooking uh, so that your food doesn't taste like really ashy or uh, it doesn't have that really, really strong creosote flavor to it. Um, close this off a little bit. All right. So, mm. yeah, it smells good, right, bud? So mm -hmm. we'll keep... We'll keep an eye on that, probably another 10, 15 minutes, uh, then we'll flip it. Um, after I flip it uh, that time, I'll probably leave it for another 15 minutes. We'll go inside, we'll pour and strain out the chicken wings, um, and then we'll go ahead, after we strain out the chicken wings and collect that marinade that we're going to use for one of our sauces later, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, dry, rinse off and then dry off the chicken wings. And we'll get those. Uh, we'll get those out here. We'll take the vegetables off. We'll go inside. We'll start dicing up everything for the uh, for the salsa. I'll show you guys how I make the salsa and how I, I taste it and get it ready. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll have the wings going. Um, and uh, the wings. I'm not gonna lie, because it's chicken. Uh, you can do chicken hot and fast, and you can put the uh, the wood smoking chips on. Uh, chicken. Some people try to do low and slow. I'm not a huge fan of low and slow chicken. Chicken dries out a lot. And with chicken wings, again, you want that crispiness. It, it should crisp up really nicely, but I do tend to the chicken quite often. So I'll be there, I'll rotate it every couple of minutes because I like to do it almost like rotisserie style with my wings. And I find that it helps cook them more evenly. It helps prevent any burning and it will crisp up that skin at the end really, really good, um, really, really well because it will, uh, slowly slowly drip out the the juices and they just kind of will go down one side again it's like a, a, a human controlled rotisserie all right what other uh, you guys have any other uh, cooking questions or anything like uh, that um you know i uh Majority of my time out with Boat Pack uh, on these smokers, and then now I got the Blackstone at Christmas, so I'm on that a bunch too. Um, 
didn't really. I used the Blackstone today to reheat some uh, some fries from the. I went to the dive restaurant last night to get some food and uh, to say hi to a friend I hadn't seen in like five years. Um, and I, I used the Blackstone to reheat them this morning. They're these cheese bacon fries. Oof, it's good stuff. Good stuff. Mm. Shout out to Chef Randy over at the dive. <laughs> I nicknamed Dirty Randy. And uh, Chef Randy Hurtado, he's the uh, he's he's pretty. They cook some good food over there. Uh, it's the dive out in Denton. It was I highly highly recommend it, guys. If you're ever over there, A really really good place. Yes, I use the big green, uh, green egg uh, for uh, <laughs> for uh, fish and seafood. Um, so the big green egg is really, really versatile, um, and it's got uh, I've got attachments for it. I actually have a I have a little motor um, that is a rotisserie attachment. Technically, it's for a uh, Komodo Joe. It's called like the Joe Tisserie is what it's sold as. But it's a, a giant rotisserie, so I've rotisserie full chickens on it, and you just you take the grate out, and then you put the, it's got a little ring that goes on it, and then it's got, you know, you've obviously got the skewer, the giant skewer that will rotate, you hook it, plug it into the motor, turn it on, and then it rotisseries, and so that's really nice. Um, it's really good for, like, what we got it right now. Um, I'm only keeping it about 350, but if I wanted to, I could open up that vent on the bottom, and that thing would go to, like, 500 plus and that's really good for like if you ever um, reverse sear um, that's where you slow cook something till it's almost up to the desired temperature and then you'll um, take it and you put it on a hot hot surface um, you know like 600 700 to sear it and it sears the outside at the end without oil or a butter and gets it nice and crispy but it cooks low and slow in the middle so it's, it's usually really really tender and it, it parts especially with beef it gets a lot more of that smoke flavor so like I reverse sear a lot of ribeyes and I use this and like I said there's a little plate adapter um, it has a bunch of adapters for it there is this one this is the uh, pizza stone for it and so that one's really really nice let me see did I put the other stone inside here let me see yeah and so inside here, because it's where I just store stuff to keep it out of the weather, because again, limited space. Um, this is called the convector. And what it does is it goes down into the, uh, into the area and it turns it into an offset almost. Um, and so it, it's a deflector plate for the heat. And so that deflector plate is, uh, allows you to kind of get, get indirect heat on your meat. And so the, the heat will rise up the sides and will come down from up top and hit the meat from there. It'll also come over the convector plate. And if you put, like I always put a water pan, um, just because it will help to one, it'll help to even out that heat distribution because there, that, that convector plate has three little openings on it. It does have some hot spots. So uh, this is the large big green egg. Um, I would recommend the extra large for anybody that's gonna get one, just because the extra large can fit briskets and it puts the, the food a lot further away from those hot spots. Um, some people, uh, I've read online, don't have as much of an issue with the hot spots, but I find that, um, I, don't, I don't know, I find that uh, with my large one here, it has some issues with the hot spots. That's why whenever I, when I cook the brisket in the offset, I don't wrap it in butcher paper, but when I cook it in the big green egg, I find that if I don't wrap it, it tends to dry out on those sides because of those couple of hot spots where the heat's coming up. Uh, I also use a water pan to help kind of like mitigate that and to bring down the chances of burning or drying out of, of the meat. So um, I use this for pretty much everything. I use it for smoking, use it for grilling, I make pizzas on it. It's a, it's a very, mm. the big green egg is probably the single hand, handedly like the most versatile outdoor like cooking utensil. You can grill on it, you can smoke on it, um, you can cook pizza on it, you can basically turn it into an oven. Um, you keep it, like if you fill up um, and you keep it and you're going to do a smoke at like 225, you can fill up that charcoal barrel, keep the uh, vents and everything correctly set, and it will burn. I've literally had it burn for like 14 hours before for like a pork shoulder and never had to add anything to it, so... So, good question. 
Yeah, I actually, I'll be cooking the Mrs. Uh, um, she doesn't, she's not a huge fan of wings, which is fine, teach their own, um, but she likes salmon, so I'll be actually smoking some salmon on mesquite here um, towards the end of the wings. I'll clear some space and uh, I'll make sure I'll, I'll throw down. You'll see uh, right now it's salmon. I put, um, or I'm going to put uh, some garlic, um, some parsley, um, fresh parsley, um, and probably a big like slab of butter. I'll get it cooking. It takes, I'll cook it for like 12 minutes. And what I do usually is I cook it to where um, I'll cook it directly over the flame. Again, right around 350. Um, and for about six minutes, I'll cook it inside of a little pouch, and then I'll take it out of the pouch and let it cook directly on the flame sometimes. Uh, today I'm going to do direct flame, see how that goes. Uh, I hired a, a tip to try and keep it from uh, like burning or overcooking in places, so I have had some issues with the, with the fish on there. So I've been mo wrapping it mostly in foil or in butcher paper, so I'm going to try a different technique of like how to position it in the egg and see how that goes today. I have done whole fish on it, um, but I, I think today I've just got a salmon uh, fillet. Um, but again, I would. My issue is is like to try and get a whole fish on this one. This is the large size, but I just find that like it has a hard time holding like a 14 pound brisket. Like when it's in there, it's almost touching the edges, which is not good because you want even airflow over it. So trying to get a whole fish in there, you'd have to kind of like turn it and. Uh, I like to try and keep the meats pretty pretty flat and level so the juices don't the juices will drip off or and they won't pull. When I find that stuff is kind of like bent up, I, it causes pulling and like especially with like a brisket, you don't want the bark. Um, with the fish, I, I worry that it would kind of tilt like the tail or something might uh, make it like cook unevenly or like put a bend in it to where the heat's not getting to some of the parts. Alrighty, so um, I'm gonna go ahead. We're at the part to where I'm about to start uh, going inside and prepping the wings. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll rotate. I'll go ahead and rotate. Actually, no, we got about seven more minutes. Now I'll be out here for about seven more minutes. We'll rotate the uh, the vegetables one more time. Um, I'll put the garlic on because it doesn't require as much smoke, in my opinion. I don't like it as a uh, as smoky. Um, but we'll get the garlic on and then we'll go inside and we'll start to uh, prep the wings and stuff and show you guys how I do that. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty busy afternoon. What time is it? 4.51. The game starts soon, I think. We got a little bit behind. I know they usually take forever, but man, we what time is kickoff? Okay, 6.30. We're good then. Yeah. Oh, 5.30 Central. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I timed it right. Sweet. I was worried. Sweet. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, you were right. It starts at 5.30 our time in Texas, so. 4.51. That's good, because the wings won't take that long to cook. Um, take about half an hour. Um, takes about 12 minutes for the salmon. Um, and then uh, I'll be blending this stuff up. Um, I'm gonna get going real fast here in a little bit because there's a lot of stuff I have to do, but it, it, it'll be good. It'll be good. Um, shouldn't be too difficult. Um, man, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've been, you know, I just started streaming the first stream uh, I did Friday during the day. So just Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and it's it's a lot more work than I thought it would be. When I sit at, it's easier when I'm playing games, but. Trying to you know get the get the camera people and uh, try and get stuff set up to where you know uh, there's not all the stuff in the way. You got pretty decent shots. A lot more went into it than I thought would. So been uh, running around. I feel a uh, whole bunch, but it's been fun. I like it. Thanks for joining, guys. How are you doing, Bug? Good. 
I like seeing your secrets to cooking. Oh, you like seeing the secrets to cooking? You like you like learning? Yes, you should make a cookbook called The Secrets of Cooking. Really That's good, a good food. Name. Problem is, I mean, you can make a book, cookbook, but I'm mostly uh, most of my stuff I've just learned from watching other people and then experimenting. But um, I feel my cooking's pretty good. Pretty you like a scientist cook because you're <laughs> experimenting. I do cook a lot of different stuff all the time, so. check on the uh, the vegetables we'll see how they're doing and then we'll uh, go inside and start prep getting those wings prepped mm. again like I said that char I really like that char it gives the uh, tomatoes it gives the salsa a really really good flavor smoky Smoky salsa. Yes, man. All right, let's go get that garlic. We'll come. Uh, we'll put the garlic out um, on the smoker. Then we'll drain the wings. Uh, and then we'll get the uh, the stuff off of the salsa. We'll prep the salsa. We'll get the wings out there and going. And uh, then we'll, we'll have some delicious food to eat. Yum. Yum is right. All right. So where's my head? We are gonna drain. Gonna drain the wings. So to do that, um, we're gonna drain and dry off the wings. Should be able to get them all in this. I think there's enough space. Looks like it. All right. So I'm gonna get the colander from outside. You don't have to follow me out there. Um, need some gloves. Always try to wear gloves. Um, one, just because I don't like having to wash my hands 500 times. Um, and then. Keeps them nice and clean, uh, and then also you can try and avoid uh, any contamination and stuff like that. All right, you stay here. I'm just gonna grab the polymer from outside real quick and drop the uh, the garlic in the uh, smoker, and then I'll be right back in. Okay. Mm. Alright, so these are our wings. They've been marinating a little over an hour. You can marinate them overnight if you like. Um, like I said, I try to keep um, try to keep the marinating to uh, a minimum. That way I can still try to guarantee the uh, crispiness of that skin. Crispy skin is like my favorite part, so try to make sure that I can uh, guarantee that. I 
Hey, bud, can you open that uh, trash can? Here you go. Straight in. Alrighty. Mmm. We'll go ahead and put these over here. We will pat them dry um, before we take them all the way out. Um, but yeah, we'll just take them, get that good sauce off. We'll start to we'll start to put that we'll put the sauce in or the marinade in a uh, saucepan and get it going on the stove. Start to reduce it down uh, so we can make a pretty tasty uh, wing sauce with it. It'll be good. Add a little bit more uh, honey. Add some more orange juice. It gives it a really really good flavor. Um, right. I'll just here for a little bit. Open up bag number two. All together we got about five pounds of chicken wings here. Um, which, if you guys haven't gone to the store yet, and you're still, you know, you still have time, Kroger right now has them on sale for, if you clip their digital coupon, which literally you just download the app and you hit clip coupon, uh, it's $5.99 for two and a half pounds, which is pretty cheap. So six bucks for two and a half pounds of chicken is chicken wings especially. Chicken wings are like so crazy expensive for so little meat. I mean, I know it's just a fad. But, you know, that dark meat does taste pretty good. And so I understand. But, we'll go ahead, get this, get the last of these. We'll pat them dry, and then uh, we'll go outside. We'll get the vegetables off here in about 15 minutes, and then we'll throw these on. I will prep the salmon real quick as well. Um, and then we'll get to, uh, We'll get the salmon ready to go. Salmon only takes about 12 minutes to cook, usually on the 350. I say usually, it's on average. It's it's a little bit different. It kind of depends on how the air is flowing through the uh, big green egg on that day. Um, like today, we've got uh, a lot of high winds, so those high winds are gonna make the air flow pretty well, so it might cook a little bit faster than normal. Okay, so. This is over here. Set that down. Come over here. All right. Time to remove this pair of gloves. Um. What's up, kiddo? This, the iPad is at like low battery. So. Oh, it's low battery. No. All right. So um, we got that. Uh, so let me go ahead. We'll get it plugged in, get it charged, and we'll pick the string back up when we, uh, when we're no. getting... No! It just stopped.